Welcome to my channel where learning art is fun. I'm Sarah and in today's video I'm going to show you how I draw this realistic frog. So I started out with an outline sketch on my grey paper and I'll be showing you all the things that I use to create this drawing but I will also list them in the description box below if you want to go and check those out. So if you watched last week's videos you'll know that I'm starting a new series of videos which is the realistic versus the cartoon challenge. So last week I did a realistic donut on Tuesday's video and the challenge was to guess who I might be drawing as a cartoon on the Friday's video. And we did get a correct guess so it was really nice to be able to shout out the person who guessed correctly at the end of Friday's video. So if you want to play along this week and guess which cartoon frog I might be drawing on Friday then don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed click the bell icon so that you get alerted of the new videos and drop a comment in the box below who you think I might be drawing with a chance to be called out or shouted out on Friday's video so I've really enjoyed doing this series of videos so far. It's really nice to have a bit of a challenge and a bit of a change. So I still get to have a go at drawing realistic things on Tuesday. And I still get to do the cartoon things that I enjoy drawing on Friday too. So if you like this new series of videos, don't forget to give us a comment in the box below as well. But back to the drawing for now, I'm just going to explain a little bit about how I did this. And of course the first thing, as always when you're doing something realistic, is to get a really accurate outline sketch. So you can do this in several ways. The first way is just to trace um, using tracing paper and the transfer method. And I did a video recently on that which I'll try and link in the card above. The other way is to use a light box if you've got one of those, or you can use your computer screen or a window on a nice day. The other way that you can do that is to use the grid method or if you feel really confident and you're really good at accurately drawing you can just do it freehand. So once you've got your accurate drawing down the next thing is to choose the materials that you're going to use to colour it in. So I went for a mixture of things this week again. Um, I like using the markers just to get my sort of base colours down just to cover that space really quickly and then I can go in on the top of that with my different colored pencils and um, highlighters and whatnot. So it's up to you what you use, you don't have to use the same as me, but this is a method that I found really good because it's nice and quick but also allows you to put in some nice details. I'm also, as you can see, using the Frisket film that I used last week and mentioned in last week's video. And this is because I like doing my backgrounds with pastels. So soft pastels are really good for, again, covering a lot of space quite quickly. And you can get some really nice smooth blends as well. But again, you haven't got to have this. You can use tracing paper or just do it freehand in whatever materials you like. So once you've chosen the materials that you're going to use and you've picked out a nice range of colours using perhaps a reference picture or photograph to guide you on what colours you might need, then the next step is to block out the main areas, as I said, and I've done this with my Copic markers. And then once you've done that and you've sorted what you're doing if you're doing a background as well, then you can go in with your darkest darks and your lightest lights. So get the midtones in first, that's just kind of getting your base colours down before you then go in and do the dark areas and the light areas. So I've used my pan pastels to get in just that basic outline around the frog and then lifting off that film then reveals the protected area underneath. So it doesn't lift off any of the colour, but it does just, does just protect your drawing from getting any pastel on. It gives a really nice effect, I think. So once I've done the background and I blocked out the main colours, then it was time to go in with a few more details. And I decided to use coloured pencils for this. So I started off doing the eye and that was a really dark area so I 
used, I think I did use um, a dark sepia and added a tiny bit of blue to that as well. And then just went in with a variety of different colour pencils just to add some details to the rest of the frog. So not everyone is a fan of the frog. My sister in particular thinks they're too boingy, but let me know what you think of frogs. Do you like them or not? I think they're pretty cute and they're not actually, if you've ever felt a frog, they're not actually slimy. A lot of people think they're really slimy, but they're not. I think they're quite cute really. But let me know in the comments box, what do you think of frogs? Maybe one of you has got them as a pet, I don't know. But moving on to the underside of the frog here, I did notice that there were a lot of different colours that made up this area. So it wasn't just green or yellow, there were actually quite a lot of pinks as well. So the whole of this drawing probably took me about an hour and a half. But I did do it quite a lot smaller than some of my recent drawings which seemed to take forever. So. It's quite nice if you're doing realistic drawing to get it to a reasonable size that's realistic for you to complete in the time that you have available to you. So I just used my white Prismacolor pencil to add in some of those highlights and also to blend some of the colour pencil layers that I've put down. The thing that um, is quite important as well if you're using pastels, I think I've probably mentioned it before, is to make sure that as you can see I've got something under my hand just to protect from smudging the drawing. And this is a really good habit to get into. It just means that you won't transfer any of the pastel or if you're using anything like graphite as well that can transfer onto your hand and then smudge over your drawing. So it's a really good habit to get into. So now I'm going in with some darker colours just to add contrast to those lighter areas that I've already put in. And as I've said with any realistic drawing, it's really important to make sure that you go as dark as is needed for the darkest areas and that will help make it look more realistic and stand out. I think actually I probably could have gone a bit darker underneath the frog, but I think it turned out okay in the end and I did really enjoy doing this because it was something different and didn't take too long either. And for those last details on the back of the frog, I did make sure that my pencil was really nice and sharp. And just then adding with a black fine liner some details around the eye and the mouth. So next week I'll be doing another video like this and I've got a really good idea of what I'm gonna be drawing. So I'm quite excited about it. But make sure that you tune in on Friday and as I said if you've got a guess of which cartoon frog you think I might be drawing on Friday's video don't forget to take part drop a comment in the box below and it could be your name that I'm shouting out at the end of Friday's video so let me know what you think of this frog if you've tried anything like this at home if you found the tips helpful then do let me know I really appreciate all your comments So 
so just coming to the end now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.